Welcome to By Faith, our current Elder Conversation podcast series where we walk through the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11. I'm Laura, your host. Hebrews 11 gives us a list of examples, a cloud of witnesses that exemplify faithful obedience. Each week, one of our teaching pastors will take one of the people mentioned in the chapter and tell us what is their story, why is their faith exemplary, and what should we today learn and take away from their faith. As we continue our study of the people commended for their faith in Hebrews 11, we move from the narrative of Moses' life to Joshua's. If you've missed any of our previous elder conversations, you can find them online at tcbchurch.org elders. This week is kind of unique because we are looking at an event that happened in the life of Joshua, but the verse in Hebrews 11 doesn't actually mention Joshua. Hebrews 11 verse 30 says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. So what is going on with the walls of Jericho? Why is the faith described here exemplary and what should we learn from it? So Joshua is one of my favorite books in the Bible, and I'm not the only one. A lot of people love the book of Joshua, and I think the reason why is it, it, it's actually one of the few times in the Old Testament where Israel somewhat has it together, um, and there seems to be more wise decisions, more faithful um, obedience uh, than others. And then there's just great stories of how God fights for Israel throughout the book. It's just really an incredible book. Even the part in the middle, which is the allotment of the land, when you understand that that land allotment goes all the way back to God's promise to Abraham, it's like you're celebrating uh, with these people as you see God's faithfulness to deliver his promises. It's just an incredible, incredible book. And in the end, in Joshua chapter 23, Joshua's old and advanced in years. He is about to die. He pulls uh, Israel, its leaders, together and essentially delivers a farewell address. And in this farewell address, he tells the people of Israel to remember that it was the Lord their God who fought for them. In other words, they didn't conquer this land because they were stronger braver, or any other thing that would be attributed to them. They conquered the land because God gave it to them, because God fought for them. That's the end of the story, or the end of the book of Joshua anyway. But that's not exactly how it begins. It begins, like most things, with a lot of uncertainty. And so Moses, who had been the faithful leader of Israel, who had delivered them out of Egypt, He's now dead, and Joshua is about to take over. And not only that, they're going to cross the River Jordan and go into Canaan, go into the Promised Land, where city after city, people group after people group are waiting to fight them. There will be seven years of war. And the first place they come to, really, is this city called Jericho. And it has this great wall that fortifies and protects the city. And God comes to uh, Joshua and says, look, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take Israel, and for six days, you're going to march around the city, one time each day. Then on the seventh day, you're going to go around seven times. And after the seventh time, you're going to get the entire nation, the entire people, to yell and scream and make a bunch of noise, blow trumpets, and the walls will fall down. Imagine Joshua having to go back to the people and say, look, I have a battle strategy, and that being it. I mean, that's, uh, it's not conventional. (laughs) And so, You guys know the story. Israel is obedient. They do just that. They march around around the city walls. And on the seventh day, they go seven times. They make the noise and the walls fall and Jericho is delivered into uh, the hands of Israel. So a few observations I want to make. First, notice 
in Hebrews, our author points out that the walls fell by faith. It wasn't their military might that delivered Jericho. It was their faith in God. And we know from Joshua the connection to that. It was God who was fighting for them. So their victory wasn't in their strength. Their victory was in their faith that God would deliver them, that God would fight for them. So I think that's a great observation to make when we consider what's happening here. Their faith was in God to fight for them, not their strength. And their actions demonstrated that in their obedience, uh, really, to this whole strategy. Another observation that I think just shouldn't be overlooked in this is it's one of those things, it's not a direct thing in Scripture, it's just human nature. And so, again, want to always make a difference. This isn't something that you're reading anywhere. But have you ever been a part of a group and there's just this, uh, almost this feeling of this awkward thing that you've never done before? Uh, I think sometimes maybe we gather in a church to even worship and sing and it feels like that. You you want to sing, but you don't want to sing so loud that the person next to you, you know, they might hear you and uh, we wouldn't want that, right? It's, so it's this kind of measured participation. I, I want you to realize in this moment, the people of Israel, after marching around the city for seven days, and on that seventh day, the seventh time, they shout, they yell, and there is... There has to be, in the human nature of what that is, a act of faith with a measured response of waiting to see what will happen and how will God do this incredible thing. And I, I think that's a really challenging um, example to us in our faith not to hold back our participation. So when it comes time for us to yell... For us to seize that moment in faith, uh, it's not protected. It's, it's vulnerable. It might even be awkward. And so when I think of what Israel was doing in that moment, I think of my own lack of faith and what I would probably be tempted to do in that moment, which is to hold back and to only participate with a measured faith, one that would yell a little bit, but not fully. And I, I see in this example the victory that's in that, the power that's in that moment. And I just see that in my own life, and I don't want to be late on that. I want to be able to very quickly, with reckless abandon, uh, cry out and proclaim that my hope is in Jesus. Not my image, not my strength, but fully in Him. So as you go this week, Here's what I would remind you of. Walls of a great city fell to the ground through faith. Jesus said we can move mountains by faith. The people of Israel conquered Jericho, not by their strength, but by their faith. So how does that happen? It happens because the Lord our God fights for us. And faith is the vehicle in which that happens. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. So as you go through this week, live by faith, trusting not in yourself, but trusting in the Lord your God to fight for you each and every moment.